Welcome to The Paper Fold. I'm your host, Sarah, The Paper Nerd, and I'm so glad to be back nerding out with you on my favorite topic, stationery. My incredible guest today may just be on the forefront of not just elevating the entire stationery category in the eyes of the consumer, but also evolving the stationery wholesale game. But before I get to Tyler, I want to call out another All-American original, Avanti Press. Whatever your style or messaging need, this Detroit house of paper always has something irresistible up its design sleeve, sure to elevate your card exchange into the memorable event you want it to be. Right now, much of our community is preparing for the winter market and Avanti Press has doubled their show appearances. They'll be setting up shop in Dallas, Atlanta, Las Vegas, as well as New York now. That's a lot of opportunities to shop exquisite newness from all the Avanti Press brands, Avanti, A Press, America, and now Nikki D2. As I record this, the Greeting Card Association's retreat and workshop is about to kick off in Colorado, and I am already hearing rumors about the potential locale for next year. Maybe Maybe, just maybe, it will be the Motor City. I, for one, will be thrilled if they come true. Now, on to my guest. This summer, Yoseka at Yoseka Stationery held a stationery event, Stationery Fest, in Brooklyn. I did not attend, sadly, so I watched this sold-out two-day consumer event on Instagram like everyone else. Now, Eunice of the Little Craft Place is throwing a three-day consumer stationery event in Houston this April called the Little Craft Fest. And on the weekend of March 22nd and 23rd, Tyler McCall and Eric Campbell of Paper and Pencil Chicago are holding Chicago Stationery Fest. I literally just bought my VIP pass today. I'm following them on Instagram and screaming every time I see that one of my favorite makers is exhibiting there. Paper Baristas, a huge supporter of this podcast, will be there, as well as I Loop Papery, Quotations, Quick Brown Fox Letterpress, A Favorite Design. Suffice to say, I am thrilled at the thought of experiencing these brands in a consumer format. And if you are a paper nerd and have never experienced uh, the category at wholesale at a trade show where a lot of the magic happens, you are in for an enormous treat. I am so intrigued by all of this. I often say that stationery will only survive if every generation makes it its own. And apparently that's what we're seeing. I find it so interesting that Tyler and Eric didn't even attend their first trade show until after their store had already opened. Clearly they are shaping stationery in its post COVID incarnation. So clearly I have a million questions for Tyler and I'll have him here right after this. Nerds, I cannot be the only one wondering what that fantastic and fantastical LA-based brand, Girl with Knife, has been up to lately. After all, this California house of design has trailblazed its way through paper goods, home decor, and yes, even house design since the incredible creative powerhouse Alicia Castaldi founded it in 2018. Every last creation humbly springs from a nimble slice of Alicia's knife, aka her trusty X-Acto blade, with messaging and imagery that is by turns sweet and sassy, but always incredibly smart, you want this girl by your proverbial side. It's no surprise then that Girl With Knife has assembled a huge stack of titles and awards in its brief existence. Among them, the incredibly prestigious Artist of the Year Louis Award in 2022, as well as the equally competitive but far edgier Best Use of Profanity, Noted at Noted Award, and not just once, but two times over. Clearly, I am not the only one waiting rapidly to see what drops next. New for 2025, look out for a dozen new card designs, both everyday and seasonal, as well as some gorgeous wraps in which to stylishly clad your gifts. Alicia tells me it is a tease to whet your appetite for a much larger spring release coming. I, for one, cannot wait. Meanwhile, since officially opening its doors for business, Knife House Palm Springs has been booked rather solid with weddings and photo shoots. And after two years of painstaking work, Knife House Bel Air is finally complete. These houses transmit Alicia's vision into exquisite three-dimensional living spaces, but for those of us who cannot experience them in California, Girl with Knife dispenses that glamour in paper and gift form. Thus, whether it is a hilarious greeting card for that bestie you have been missing, like the one reading, you're the only one I answer the phone for, against an image of an old-fashioned phone replete with curly cord, or the eternally 
fierce candle and intoxicating essence of midnight rose to remind you of your true nature in olfactory form. This is officially your brand new BFF in paper goods and home decor. So if you're a paper and or design nerd out in the wild looking to express your best self as you lift up those you adore, head on over to girlwithknife, all spelled out, dot com and immerse yourself. And if you are in the trade, shop this top shop brand sensation exclusively on Fair 24 7 and be on the lookout for winter market specials. I guarantee your stationery, as well as your living and workspaces, will slay. Tyler, welcome to the Paper Fold. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on. Uh, so, I've so enjoyed seeing your store paper in Pencil Chicago. Um, I've really enjoyed watching it blossom since you opened in uh, May of 2023. Um, of course, I've never actually visited. My perspective is solely shaped by your Instagram <laughs> feed. Um, so I have to know, what first prompted you and your co-owner to open a card and paper shop? Yes. So I have always loved paper and pens and markers and greeting cards and postcards. Um, I was a big fan of the Scholastic Book Fair as a child. Um, and I think part of having a shop now is kind of um, scratching the itch of never having money to be able to buy things at the book fair. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. I know. Thank you. It's very sad. Um, <laughs> but sometimes people come in here and they, they get the book fair vibes, which I really appreciate. But I've always <laughs> loved these things. Um, and I've always had a growing collection of them. Um, I have boxes of written in and unwritten in greeting cards in my home. Um, <clears throat> and I just love it so much. And, uh, after kind of the, 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 the wildness that was 2020, um, my husband and I decided to make some big changes to our lives. And that included closing a business that we had had for about five years, um, mm -hmm. actually selling part of that business, uh, moving back to Chicago where we had lived for a little bit before the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. and taking a year off of our, just kind of hitting pause for a year to reevaluate what we wanted to do with our lives and how we wanted to be spending our time. And I'm really fortunate that we had the ability to do that. Um, and I joke that I retired for a year and, um, and then paper and pencil kind of bloomed out of that. And it's, it's funny when my so my husband is my also my co-owner Eric. Um, when we talk about the shop, it really started, um, and I'm sure you've heard this before. It almost started as kind of like a joke, where we would just <laughs> say like, "What if we opened a stationery shop?" And then the next thing was, "Well, what if we looked at what available retail spaces in our neighborhood?" We wanted to be in our neighborhood of Andersonville, where we live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, we said, "Well, what if we?" like called the landlord what if we went and looked at the space what if we learned what cam and triple net leases are and all of these things and then before we knew it sarah we had signed a five-year lease and um had ordered a ton of product and um we were getting ready to open a store <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I feel like most people go through that process with like getting married or having a child or buying a sure. house, but you know, for yeah. a business that, you know, I think that's totally. great. And it, it's clear that it's, I don't know, when I look at your Instagram feed, it does seem like, I, I don't know, there is sort of a quality, like, this is what I've always dreamed of. And maybe it's yeah. just because I have that love of uh, paper stores as well, but it has that sort of, I don't know, it just has a quality, like, you know, it, it it's just very, uh, um, maybe it's because you don't see as many pure card and paper shops anymore, but it, yeah. it, fe it feels very like, um, it just, it just, it feels very organic, uh, to what yeah. a paper shop is and not, um, not just at all like put on or you know, contrived in any sort of way. Like you're there because you love the product and you just want to connect people to it. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I'm so glad that comes across because it's true. We really do. We love it. We love our neighborhood. I think that's kind of like the root of um, what 
where everything blossomed from. We love this community that we live in here um, Mm -hmm. in Chicago and this neighborhood, actually the whole kind of far north side where we are in the city didn't have a proper stationary shop. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. There there was one in the neighborhood that closed um, during the Mm -hmm. pandemic. So we saw the need. So yeah, it's really about like filling that need and then also um, having all of our kind of beautiful things here. And I will say, and I don't want to offend your listeners, but (laughs) Eric and I, Eric and I are are maybe a bit elitist when it comes to the idea of a paper store or a stationary shop. When we think a lot of shops these days are beautiful gift shops that sell some paper goods and stationery um, and cards, but they're not proper stationary shops. I I, so, I so tend we, to agree. Yes, so we wanted to open a proper paper store, stationary store, and. Look, it's not to our full dreams. We don't have wrapping items. We don't have uh, open stock paper and envelopes and stationery because we only have 400 square feet. So one day, maybe when we have a larger space, we'll we'll have everything. But for now, we have everything crammed in here that we could fit. Uh, I mean, I think that's wonderful. And I, you know, retail's in this funny space right now where like a lot of stores feel like they, even gift stores feel like they have to have their hands in everything. I see it. I'm, I apologize for my dog. I see it at big boxes as yeah. well, where it's like, okay, we have a little bit from this category. We have a little bit from mm-hmm. that category, but there's something about the pure paper and card store, uh, mm-hmm. that is, uh, very special. And, uh, I, it's funny cause I was thinking about a uh, stationary store day and how we don't have a dedicated one in my town outside of Cleveland. There was not, yeah. there was no one participating and there were at least three card and paper shops that I spent hours in growing up that shaped me into doing what I do. So Thank you for bringing that model back, you know, keeping it in circulation. It's so, I think it is so important. And, uh, um, I, I don't, it's odd to think of having perused like endless gifts and stationery as like a formative experience, but I, I do think it was a formative experience for me uh, in the eighties. Yeah. I love that. Hey nerds, many of you are already familiar with Paper Baristas and its incredible founder, Christy Asper. Christy was my guest on episode 56 of The Paper Fold and is also a longtime friend and sponsor of our Nerd Note segment. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce something special just for the new year, Paper Baristas Fair Trade Planners 2025. Year in and year out, the following for these babies grows since users find that these gorgeous creations quickly become as essential to getting anything done as that first cup of coffee. What sets Paper Barista's pressed planners apart from all the rest, however, is not just their stellar design, but that every last aspect of their manufacture truly aims to improve our planet. They are fair trade certified, made with eco-friendly materials, with 10% of the profits donated to the International Justice Mission to fight human trafficking. That means that even after the year ends, your purchase is helping someone's fresh start. Take it from me, I look at products all day, every day, and it is very difficult if not outright impossible, to create a product that doesn't just look good, but truly does good as well. Their fair trade press planners are a labor of love to bring into the world every year. Christy has written that between material shortages and keeping factories audited for safe working environments, it's truly a miracle to generate each batch. Part of what makes these so remarkable is that when Christy first designed them, no one was approaching the planner category so responsibly. How empowering is it to choose to spend your money on a product so carefully and lovingly brought to life, especially when and so much in this product category is not made responsibly. Pressed planners stand apart thanks to their easy luxury and utter simplicity. They enable you to completely organize your life and look ultra polished while doing so. Each posh library cloth covered cover is graced with metal book corners to match the foil printing along its front and wire rings along its side. These are durable, strong, and gorgeous, and promise to remain so as you journey through your year. 
Inside, each month has a tabbed section that kicks off with a page dedicated to your own personal monthly blend, aka your goals and important dates. That's followed by a month at a glance spread, followed by a series of weekly spreads on the left with dot grids for notes and doodles on the right. Every last element unites so you can have your entire life in control literally within your hands. Since 2019, this Iowa family-owned brand has devoted itself to leaving the earth a better place by creating goods that are eco-conscious, fair trade, and give back. Supporting paper baristas means supporting this lofty, heady mission. 2025 fair trade pl press planners are now available for pre-order, but act quickly. Due to fair trade margins, these are produced in small quantities and they sell out quickly. Visit paperbaristas.com to see why behind every successful person is a substantial amount of coffee and a Paper Baristas Fair Trade Planner. Finally, while you're there, check out the other wonderful collections from this mission-driven all-American brand, from Swedish dishcloths to microfiber tea towels to some of the most gorgeous handmade cards you've seen. You'll elevate both your world and our common good. So I also have to ask, um, you know, it's a sad fact of life. I mean, every day I hear more shops are closing, specifically card and paper shops. So like, I got to know, like, what are you doing different? How is your approach differing? Like, what is your secret sauce? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to try and like, um, like, uh, I guess like quantify what we're doing, but uh, I think a few things, first of all, we, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of like, I'm just going to kind of bring brain vomit for a minute, if that's okay. That's fine. So I don't have please. like, I don't have a fully plan. I don't have a fully outlined business plan. Um, <laughs> if I were giving a, pro a real presentation, I would have slides and everything. But um, I think first of all, we chose a great location in our neighborhood. So our neighborhood of Andersonville on Chicago's far north side is called the Shop Local Capital of Chicago. There's over a hundred mm -hmm. independently owned shops within about a 12 block stretch here in the neighborhood. Um, uh -huh. We have a very active chamber of commerce that's very supportive of all of our local businesses. And we're fortunate to have some really engaged um, older people, our elected officials here in Chicago, who really advocate for and support local business. And really, this community is very focused on shopping local and supporting the businesses mm -hmm. here in Andersonville. Um, Andersonville is changing and evolving, especially uh, after the pandemic. There's been a lot of the mom and pop and independent businesses that closed in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. Sure. And unfortunately, some of those have started to be replaced by more corporate businesses or even types of businesses that are just kind of like, uh, like, like things like doctor's offices or professional or personal services that really just suck the life out of a, a retail corridor because mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. end up kind of acting like dead storefronts because they're not mm -hmm. nearly as engaged as retail shops. So for us, opening a, a shop here in the neighborhood was really about ensuring that a retail space didn't go to a, a regional or national brand and that a, a retail mm -hmm. space didn't go to some kind of um, unengaged type of service type of business. So that's part of it, being in this neighborhood. Being in an area that doesn't have a proper stationary shop, I think, has really helped because we have people come in. Of course, from our neighborhood, but from surrounding neighborhoods. And even we have regular customers from Milwaukee and from uh, southern Wisconsin who make the drive down about an hour and a half uh, once a month to shop with us because there's not really a shop like ours between here and somewhere like Madison or like um, Appleton, Wisconsin. There's a pin shop in Appleton. So, um, yeah, so we have regulars like that. So I think being, you know, a very niche business has helped. And I think part of that too, Sarah, like we were talking about earlier, is staying very focused on our categories and very focused on our customer. So we are not a gift shop. Uh, we do not sell gifts. The stationary products we sell are the gifts. So that's the way that we approach it. Um, last year was our first holiday season. And I wasn't quite sure what to do. I do all the purchasing for the shop mm -hmm. and I wasn't mm -hmm. quite sure uh, how to purchase. So I purchased a lot of our best sellers. And then I thought, well, I'm going to bring in some, what I call gifting stationery that is a bit more giftable than maybe traditional stationery. So things that are like 
cuter notebooks, more themed notebooks, notepads, things like that. And surprisingly, mm-hmm. those things did not do nearly as well as our regular bestsellers because people were coming to us for the high quality stationary goods and supplies, the really creative greeting cards, the really beautiful postcards, and then really well-made stationery from Japan and Germany and and some of it made handmade right here in the US as well. So for this holiday season, uh, my approach was very different because my husband and I had a long conversation and we just we have to remember that the stationery is the gift. We don't need additional gifts in place of that. So staying almost to a point ruthlessly focused <laughs> on our <laughs> ideal customer and ruthlessly focused on the categories that we stock in the shop. And I know that is very difficult, especially when it feels like what you're doing may not be working, but mm-hmm. it's something that we've been really focused on. And then the last thing I'll say is mm-hmm. the marketing piece is huge. Um, mm-hmm. Before doing this, I spent about five or six years with my own online business where I actually taught local businesses how to use Instagram and email marketing to market their businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a superpower that I have. Um, Instagram comes very naturally to me. So we do things like every day of the week that we're open, we're posting on Instagram in the feed on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Every day that we're open, we're posting on Instagram stories and reminding people that we're open. We are regularly showcasing new products on our Instagram. We are regularly reposting what our customers post. And I'll say we're doing all of this and we've built a really thriving local business. <laughs> Excuse me, where? I'm fortunate to say we've been able to experience month over month growth since we opened uh-huh. and we do not do online. We are only in person shopping. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's incredible. Well, I, I love that. I mean, you said a lot. I made a, I made a bunch of yeah. notes. I mean, I love that. <laughs> I love that you say, you know, this, the stationery is the gift. And I, I will also say like, clearly, you know, you, you have an eye for stationery. you know, you know, what's a good pen, what's a, what's a not mm-hmm. so good pen. But I think among like maybe the general populace, like until you start using a lot of washi tape, for example, yeah. just to take an example, like there's yeah. bad washi tape out mm-hmm. there and good washi tape is a great gift. Um, you know, a nice card that really feels like it comes out of the envelope beautifully and yes. just presents gorgeously. Like the, these are the small qual qualities and small aspects mm-hmm. of stationery that elevate it. And if you're um, able to, you know, build that customer base that understands that and appreciates that. And clearly if there's not even another good store to, through Madison, which is quite a drive. I drove it with my daughter yeah. when we were uh, doing a college visit. So I know, yeah. um, you know, that's really, that's really um, something. And I um, would think that like every year it'll, you know, your role as, you know, a quality purveyor of quality stationary gifts, you know, it'll just grow. Uh, yeah. I'm amazed that you're not um, online. I mean, and that just makes you much more of a destination. Do you have a lot of people who are like walk in and are like, oh, I arrived? <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, it's it's really fun to watch people, uh, people who are here in the city who come in and, and, um, they're surprised this exists in the city where they live because, you know, they didn't know that we were here. Um, and, you know, I imagine even five years down the road, that will still happen. Um, and then people who come in from out of town, people who are coming in with friends. Um, I think some of my favorites are uh, folks who live in our neighborhood and who bring their parents in um, and their parents who are really excited to be here because they know that their adult child really loves the shop as well. Um, so that's really fun to see as well. And for the parents to kind of get that, like, they're like, oh, yeah, of course, my like my nerdy kid loves this kind of store, you know, like my kid who always wanted money for the book fair and who always had to have the coolest notebooks. Um, we had a customer recently who brought um, who brought their their mom in and their mom was talking about how as a kid, they like always demanded to have French paper. <laughs> <laughs> and how their child must be so happy because now there's a shop where they can get French paper. It was just like those kind of funny moments, which I really love. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I mean, the paper people are one of a kind and like, there's nothing yes. to draw people together, like a pure appreciation for, you know, a fine card or, yes. or what have you. 
Um, well, it's it is one thing to operate a successful 400 square foot brick, brick and mortar as you have done, which is quite a feat. Uh, but it's quite another to kind of throw an event. Uh, <laughs> the first annual Chicago Stationery Fest will occur March 22nd and 23rd in the new year. Even learning of its existence, um, as we were chatting about, it really warms uh, this paper nerd's cold heart. <laughs> <laughs> This is not the first consumer stationary event um, I've heard of. I love this trend. Um, clearly, it's an investment um, on your part um, that you had to consider bringing this to life. I mean, there's so many moving parts. Um, how did you know there would be enough consumer interest to carry it? Like, Or, or can you even speak to the process of bringing it to life and, and what made you even, it, it even occur to you? Yeah, for sure. Um there were a couple of things I've noticed in the past several years, whenever I've gone to like local makers market events, or I've gone like Renegade Craft Fair, you know, as a large kind of national um, makers market that comes to Chicago several times a year, that the paper booths and the paper vendors always tended to be a lot busier than other mm -hmm. vendors. So those that were selling greeting cards, stickers, oh my God, Sarah, the stickers, <laughs> sticker people. You think paper people are wild? Sticker people are crazy <laughs> and we love them. Um, but paper cards, stickers, journals, notebooks, those types of things, those always tended to be a bit more busy. And I would walk through events like that. Uh, and it really happened, I guess it was last, um, let's see, when was Renegade last here in Andersonville? I think it was back uh, last summer and I was walking through and thinking, I would love to go to an event that was just all those types of vendors. Um, like I don't necessarily care about like vintage clothes or, you know, I'm not always looking for a new candle or soap or something like that. So I would love to go to a, an event that was just those types of vendors. And then, so that was kind of the first little ping that I got when I started thinking about it. We'll be right back after this. Is the pressure of your wedding day being perfect from sunrise to sunset weighing on your mind? Planning a wedding can be stressful, but it shouldn't be. And that's why we're here to help. On the Bride Chula podcast, we celebrate love and help you plan your wedding day. We're all about keeping it real and having fun every step of the way. So whether you're just starting to plan or counting down the days, we're here to help you stay cool, calm, and collected. We have expert tips and amazing guests. Let's get this party started and embrace your inner Bride Chilla. Listen to Bride Chilla wherever you get your podcasts or visit us at thebridechilla.com. And we're back. And then what really solidified it for me was when my husband Eric and I went to New York uh, in the winter of this year. So that was what, I guess, end of January, early February, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. went to our first market. So we went to New York now to shop object. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And we had never been before. Um, but we went to market and I doing what I do best. I posted on Instagram that we were at market and I shared the vendors and the products. And I was doing little polls on our Instagram story and asking people to engage, should we stock this or stock that? And the number of people who are in our direct messages talking about how much they would love to go to an event like that, how an event like that would be so much fun. I thought, okay, wait, this is something, you know, people really appreciate this. So I started working on the idea uh, back in January of this year of 2024. And I actually had a customer who I knew did graphic design and we set up a meeting and started talking about like what the branding would look like in February. We started working on the branding. And we had initially planned on doing the event as a street festival here in Chicago during mm -hmm. the summer, because street festivals are a huge uh, part of our city here. And um, not to get too into the weeds, but I had uh, some really crazy health uh, things happen to me in oh. March, and that actually took me out of work for several months. And um, I wasn't able to work on the idea anymore. And during that time, Yosaka Stationery in Brooklyn announced that they were hosting Stationery Fest in New York. Mm -hmm. And I started watching the response to that online, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Reddit, reading about people, how excited they were about the event. And I thought, okay, this is definitely something and we have to do it. And 
I think we may need to do it inside because paper um <laughs> and weather um, and you know all of winds those things and sun. yes yes <laughs> exactly um so i just kept thinking about the idea all summer and finally um i was chatting with a dear friend who lives in chicago we've been friends since college we've known each other for a really long time and i was talking to her about it and she has done events in her professional career um and it's something she is kind of wanting to pursue more and she said if you want me to help you like plan it i would love to let's do it <laughs> so we just started as she and i we just started plotting and scheming as she and i do best mm-hmm. and i said okay well let's announce let's pick a date let's announce it and Let's pick a venue here in our neighborhood of Andersonville and um, let's start marketing it. And we did. And Sarah, the response was wild. Um, We, within the first probably 10 days or so of launching the Instagram account, we had a thousand followers on Instagram. Uh, We launched the website shortly thereafter. And I think within the first four or five days, we had 700 people on the wait list to attend. Um, And then we launched our vendor applications. And uh, I think we had almost 140 vendors apply to vend at the event. Wow. How big is the space? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but like how big is the, how big is it? So, well, all of that actually caused us to find a new location. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, because uh, I saw that because you had to move yeah, out of Andersonville. We did, yeah. Unfortunately, there's not a venue uh, with enough capacity in our neighborhood. So uh, we found a nearby venue. Uh, it's a beautiful space called Artifact Events. Um, and they have actually, for the past several years, been the host site for Market for Makers, which is another national touring mm-hmm. um, makers market show. And um, so they really, they've kind of gotten it down pat. So we'll be having the the uh, the event there in half of their venue. 2026, maybe we'll take over the whole thing. But for next year, we'll just be in half of the venue. Um, yeah, and we have capacity for about a thousand people in the venue, which is wow. really exciting. Yeah, the venue we were in before here in Amsterdam, we had about 400 people capacity. And we very quickly realized that was not going to be enough. So we made the decision to move, which... I hate that we're not in Andersonville, but the venue that we're going to be at is really gorgeous. We're excited to be there. Right. It's so hard to check all the boxes when you're putting something like this together. Like it's, you know, you're not going to get all of your wish list. Like you're going to have to, you're going to have to compromise as much as it kills you. Like, you know, when you, when you have so many moving parts, I would, I would think never having thrown a huge paper show, but um, (laughs) I, I love that you're bringing the magic of trade, sort of like the magic of trade shows and, and specifically like gift and stationary shows uh, to the populace. I remember um, several years ago, I took my daughter to New York now and it was actually like kind of the weird year where it was sort of New York was still half shut down over Mm -hmm. COVID. We Mm -hmm. had a great time, but walking in with her, and I mean, I must have had to explain to her 20 times, like, this is where stores, you know, go to buy yeah. their product. And like, once she understood that, she was like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> like, you know, she she was like a kid in a candy store. And yeah. I, I really wasn't yeah. expecting her to enjoy it as much as she did. And so to kind of bring that, and especially with all like paper people is, is going to be incredible. Um, so I, I, from what I've heard, the, um, the, um, Brooklyn event, it seemed like there was like a lot of bullet journal people, um, Mm -hmm. or, I mean, do you characterize it? So since I've been to, I've only been to trade shows with paper vendors, but never a consumer show with stationary vendors. So I'm curious, um, for, for us in the trade, uh, what do you think will be different? What can visitors expect? Uh, Um, I think a little bit of how I've been thinking about the event is it is um, it's just a much bigger version of paper and pencil um, with more vendors and people there who will be selling their products. And so that's part of how I thought of it. Ever since we opened Mm -hmm. our shop, we've really been focused on some, like I said earlier, focused on some core categories and some, Mm -hmm. some core customers. So um, the bullet journaling crowd 
uh, is huge. And for me, I kind of think of bullet journaling, planning, um, memory keeping, junk journaling, like that kind of as a category. Yeah, I do too. Um, it's all one yeah. sort of. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, where I think lately, and I would, I, I kind of love your opinion on this. I think lately a lot of the conversation in the stationary world and like stationary, I, I guess like, I don't know, stationary influencers, because those are a thing now. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of times, like the snail mail part of it gets left out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was a part of our shop. You know, I, I wanted to have cards and postcards and letter writing items. Um, and really thinking that a lot of what we sell, of course, it's great for journaling and planning, but it's also wonderful for writing letters. Um, mm -hmm. so that's another part of the show or excuse me, of, of the stationary fest, um, sure, sure. that, that we'll have is that focus on, and that's why, you know, we're having vendors like quotations or quick brown right. Fox letter press. And we have some really fun, um, Chicago based brands we'll be announcing soon, but like a favorite design will be there. Married gold, um, Mary I gold love... press, um, La Familia green. So some of our oh. favorite, um, Chicago brands that we, honestly cannot keep in the shop because they just sell so well. People love the products. We're really excited to have them uh, at the fest as well. So it's really blending those worlds of um, kind of the planner, pen, journaling world, uh, along with the snail mail, letter writing, postcard, post-crossing community, kind of in <laughs> one place. Uh, it's really our goal and kind of having vendors that speak to both of those people. And I think the cool thing is there is so much overlap between those two yes. communities as well. We see it in the shop every day. So I think there'll be a lot of overlap at the event as well. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I tend, I tend to agree. I mean, you know, it's almost like types of paper people. Like I think of like a bullet, a journal person or a pen person versus mm -hmm. like a card person who they, those types can be kind of dyed in the wool, like, mm -hmm. you know, card center types, yes. as I'm sure you experience. Uh, but they, you know, they do have like an innate appreciation for the other categories. Like usually if you yeah. dabble in one, like, you know, it's an easy entry into dabbling in another, like whatever, whatever <laughs> sure. you get into first. If you get into stickers, mm -hmm. the stickers is a gateway drug to snail mail, yes. to planning. Sure. I mean, planner people are their own breed uh, as well. Yeah. Like, and, yes. <laughs> um, and they're all just wonderful sort of uh, stationary subcultures. So I love that you're mm -hmm. kind of touching on all of them. Uh, it looks like there's some workshops planned so everybody mm -hmm. can kind of elevate uh, their their game. Um, so where would you like your store to be in five years? It, um, my guess is you'd love to expand and, and have a few more categories and, you know, integrate a couple more categories or would you, maybe you don't want to get into gift wrap. Maybe you want to stay pure. Like what, what do you see? Yeah. yeah. It's something that my husband and I talk a lot about. Um, and we don't have definitive answers on it. <laughs> I will say that, um, one of our big goals in opening this store was to have something in our neighborhood that was that that we loved going to every day and something that felt um that felt like that felt really good and approachable and doable um the business that i had before my husband worked in that business with me it got it got big which was great but we grew a team we had full time and part time staff and we had a lot of moving parts in that business and mm -hmm. it almost got to be, it was just too much. It was overwhelming. Right. And uh, for us having this store, it's something that we don't want to get, excuse me. It's something that we don't want to get so, so big that we um, feel burdened by it. Right. Right. Like you can yeah. scale your way right into a nervous breakdown. You know? And I did it, Sarah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yes. <I'm> so <laughs> no, it's so fine. Sorry. No, I feel but like, I, I feel yeah. like so many people just got burnt out uh, during yeah. COVID and like, yeah. we're all just sort of like picking up the pieces and making, yes. you know, the businesses and, you know, yeah. to accommodate our lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. You know? And so I think as the business, as the years go by and as our business grows and evolves, I mean, I love having this little shop, of course, I would love to have more space. Um, mm -hmm. 
partially so we could just fit more people in here on a busy Saturday. Um, we're really fortunate on, on a busy when, like when the weather's nice on a Saturday or Sunday, we'll have like three to 400 people come through our doors. Um, but in 400 square feet, it's a little uncomfortable. (laughs) So a little little more space. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, I would love to have space for more in shop events. That's something we did bef- when we first opened. Um, we've had to make some changes to our fixtures in the shop over the past few months, so we don't have really the space to do those anymore. But um, people really enjoyed those. So I would love to have space for that. Um, and for me, I think really like the stationary fest idea is a really great way for us to uh, kind of, you know, part of why I wanted to do this event was really to establish ourselves in the Chicago and the Midwestern stationery community and just say like, hello, we're here, like this tiny little shop in this cute little gay neighborhood, like we exist, like come shop with us, please. <laughs> um, and to have kind of a, a larger footprint and extension of what we're doing into a bigger space and to really build this community around this love of stationery. So I would love to see this event be a, a success in 2025 and us to continue to grow and evolve the event um, into something really special. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, that seems great. And, you know, there is a benefit to having like a really small space where you can, you know, kind of do your thing most of the time. And then yeah. once a year, you really spread your wings and have like throw a party, so to speak, yeah. uh, when you, when you have the space to do it and to invite, you know, a thousand stationary friends uh, yes. to come hang out with you <laughs> or more. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually planning on having a paper and pencil pop up at Chicago Stationery Fest. And I think the footprint of where our pop up will be will actually be bigger than our store. So <laughs> I'm excited to see my husband, Eric, he does all the merchandising and, and everything for the store. So I'm excited to see what he creates kind of in that space and what it's going to feel like for people. That's real. That's really cool. I mean, I'm obsessed with pop-ups, like just the idea of a temporary shop, just setting mm-hmm. up and like branding and selling and then closing up and, and going for a few days. I, I mean, maybe that's why I love trade shows so much too. Yeah. It's like that, that magic feeling, but how fun to have a temporary space where you can be like, Oh yeah, you know, maybe we'll try this or we'll do yes. this over there or, and depending on the response, maybe we can think about bringing it to the, our, you know, brick and mortar, mm-hmm. uh, full time. So I, I mean, what a fun little paper playground you're creating yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited. I'm also excited. I know we've kind of, we've touched on it a few times about the trade show topic. I mean, we have, we have one vendor in particular who's coming to the fest next year who, um, they've done trade shows, um, throughout mm-hmm. their career. They've been in the industry for a long time. And they actually said for next year, like, they don't even know if they're going to do trade shows. They, they're they just going to kind of do these consumer facing events instead and see how, because I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure the conversations you're having with other folks uh, in the industry too, I and mean, the number of shopkeepers that have reached out to say like, Hey, I'm coming. Cause I want to like shop. Is that okay? Can I like shop for my shop at this event? And we're like, of course, please. You know, that's, that's part of it, you know? Right. Right. I mean, it does seem like, I mean, I work with clients and I just observe stuff. It seems like no, there's no one person doing it two ways. Like everybody's just making their own path and being like, you know, I, I'm not really exhibiting. I'm just on fair or I'm going to try this consumer show, but maybe it's turning out to be sort of a wholesale show if there's uh, store owners walking and writing. Um, I assume they would probably just like place a fair order. If, or what I would not. assume. Yeah. It's something I'm thinking about now with, um, you know, kind of the resources we provide to vendors and how we communicate to them between now and March. So encouraging them to, you know, have business cards or postcards with your wholesale options, like that have some catalogs, have some line sheets behind the counter. Why not? I mean, if you have people asking for them, I'm, there's nothing worse for me as a, a shopkeeper and a buyer when I go to like makers markets and I want to buy things and I say, Hey, do you wholesale? And there's the fumble of, well, yeah, I guess like if you go to here, you know, make it easy for people to purchase from right. you. So I definitely want to encourage our vendors to make it easy for them because I think they'll come away with wholesale orders after oh, they- the event in March. 
They totally will. And as a buyer, I'm sure you can attest, if you ask someone if they wholesale and they fumble around and they, oh, this, that, and the other thing, like you're like, you know what? I'm going to buy from the competent person who I know is going to like get me my order on time. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's good. So you're prepping people and you know, the business is totally change is always completely changing. And I think it'll, it'll just be really interesting to see what it's like this year. And then also, of course, see how it evolves uh, mm-hmm. down the line. I, I love it. I can't wait. Tickets go on sale this week. I, I won't be releasing this this week, but sure. I'm already like going back and forth what kind of ticket I want. Yeah. And <laughs> I cannot wait. So, um, so I always close with nerd notes. Um, I have switched up the format a little bit. And I'm just asking guests to share a memorable card or letter uh, that they received, just the first one that comes to your head. I would love it if you could share one. And I'd love to hear the circumstances that led to it arriving in your hands. Yeah. So I'm kind of breaking the rules because I have two postcards that I sent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I but love really, it. <laughs> yeah, but they're really special to me. Um so these, uh, this is a postcard from Chicago that okay. um, I sent to my grandmother in July of 2009 um, when I was interning here in the city. Um, it was one of the first times I, I had spent time away. So I came to Chicago that summer um, for a college internship. So that my grandmother since passed away, but this was in her belongings. So something that's really special to me that I got. So like a note, you know, that I wrote to her. Um, so really special. I love seeing it. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a note from Chicago. I love that she saved it. Like that is, yeah. that must've been so like, um, when you first saw it to be like, I haven't seen this since I put it in the mailbox. Yeah, and, exactly. Like to see it again yeah. is how special is that? Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. And this one is equally as special. So this is actually a postcard from Singapore from that same summer. Um, part of my internship, I was able to go to Singapore for a couple of weeks, which was really special. And this was a postcard I sent to my parents when I was in Singapore. Unfortunately, both of my parents have since passed away. And this was in their belongings. Um, so being able to see this is really special too. Um, oh, so, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I love I that. Love it. Yeah, no, those are great. I save all my daughter's stuff, of course. But and I remember yeah. one year at camp, she marbled paper like it was their activity to marble paper, and she sent and she mailed it to me. And like she's asked me twenty times since then, do you still have that? I hope you kept it. Like, well, <laughs> and of course I love have. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So when we, when we opened the shop, one of the things we did is we put a little cork board up behind the counter. And so these live on the cork board here in the shop, which is really special. And then we also have, um, one of kind of the inspirations for the shop was, um, was like school. So a lot of kind of the decor, our branding is very kind of like collegiate. Yeah, a lot yeah, of the, yeah. de- a lot of the decor. Scholastic, kind of clap, craft, scholastic. fair, ass. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we actually have like school photos of our parent, my husband and I, of our parents and grandparents on the cork board behind the counter too, which is really nice just to see them every day when we're here. I love that. I love that. I love how you've integrated your history into it and, you know, and are, are creating an ongoing place for people to capture theirs and communicate with their family members. So that's amazing. So thank you so much for uh, coming by the Paperfold. This was an incredible conversation and I'm just so looking forward to your event in Chicago. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tyler, for dropping in the paper fold. I urge you to drop whatever you are doing and follow Chicago Stationery Fest, all one word, with an E in stationery, on Instagram right now and get your ticket. In the old days of National Stationery Show, anyone who worked in our industry would beg, borrow, or steal their way to New York City to show their face. I'm starting to suspect that Chicago Stationery Fest will be much the same. 
Finally, thank you for listening. Of course, feel free to give me a five-star rating and review if you are so inclined. The Paperfold is proud to be a member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. To learn more about this dynamic community, please visit evergreenpodcasts.com. Thank you so much, nerds, and please stay safe out there. Thank you.